It's far from the first time that science has been used as a tool to aid agriculture. But today's mapping of the genetic code of wheat is a genuine milestone. This is important because it means that we can start breeding new varieties of wheat much more rapidly than we were able to in the past. The information that we've generated uh, is a whole new set of tools for wheat breeders. Scientists have already unscrambled the genetic codes of other crops, including rice, maize and soybeans, but wheat has been stubborn, partly because its genome is huge, five times larger than the human genome. This research is being described as a scientific tour de force, and part of the reason why it's so valuable is that it helps both those working on GM varieties to make them more resistant to drought or more efficient in their use of nitrogen, and also helps those working on conventional crop breeding programs. The conventional non-GM route takes a long time, 10 years typically, but knowing the genetic code of a wheat variety could halve that. This is not the same as genetically engineering crops, but simply choosing to breed from varieties whose DNA carries valuable traits, a process known as marker-assisted selection. Having the sequence information uh, publicly available to groups such as my own and to all um, wheat researchers um, available now is, is incredibly helpful for us um, uh, if we're trying to improve crop yields, crop resistance to pests and pathogens, and, and, and to other stresses such as, such as drought. Um, it's much akin to, to medical researchers who will be looking at, uh, at human diseases and for them to be able to utilise the, the human sequence uh, genome project. Agricultural science at Rothamsted in Hertfordshire dates back further than 160 years and Britain can truly claim to be part of the inspiration behind the first green revolution. These jars contain wheat grain samples from a world famous experiment dating back to Darwin's time and looking at the use of fertilisers on wheat. This one was dated 1856. And today's wheat genome research follows in the footsteps of that great British tradition of excellence in agricultural science. And that's despite the fact that in recent years there's been a fall off in funding. That fall off in funding has been global at a time when agricultural scientists are working on the assumption that food production must roughly double by 2040. Research and development like this is incredibly important uh, as we face the challenge of feeding a world of 9 billion people in the face of climate change, water scarcity and so on. What we've actually been doing over the last 15 years is reducing by 50% the amount of public money globally that goes on research and development. That's the opposite of what we should have been doing faced with these challenges. At the same time, it's very important we remember that it's not as simple as science will feed the world. Uh, in fact, it's a question of politics and economics as much as science. And the most obvious example of that is that today we produce enough food globally to feed everybody, but a billion people are undernourished, not because there's an insufficient amount of food produced, but because of questions about who gets to access and buy that food. 2008 saw food riots over rocketing prices. In Haiti, demonstrators took to the streets. And this summer, there's been a repeat of volatility on world wheat markets. And today, following weeks of flooding, Pakistan responded by calling a halt to wheat exports. I think uh, science can make a contribution here by increasing the overall amount of production. That can then ease supply tensions in the market and potentially reduce volatility. But it still doesn't obviate the importance of politics and economics. It's still entirely possible for governments to take action, particularly in conditions of um, where they're f afraid for their security of supply, to take action that makes matters worse. That's what we saw in 2008. And the Russian wheat export restrictions are an unpleasant reminder of that. And science has made promises before. It's 10 years since researchers decoded the human genome. Yet one of the scientists responsible, Craig Venter, recently conceded there have been fewer medical advances as a result than first hoped. Those who favour an organic approach to farming have joined the broad welcome for today's news, but warn against viewing this as a panacea. We would have a, a note of caution, obviously, because actually feeding the world is a much more complex process and involves much complex things than 
than just selecting new breeding techniques. Um, and we really need to think about how actually in the future we will be able to feed the world sustainably when we have climate change and when we have resource shortages such as um, oil and water. 167 years after Rothamsted's early experiments, British science has again won us a seat at the top table as world leaders search for sustainable ways to feed a growing population. But that brings a heavy responsibility too, to help ensure the vulnerable get their share of what modern science can offer.